Hello, happy graduation day. I am so honored to be getting an honorary doctorate at Notre Dame with its wonderful tradition of educating women, others too, but hats off to the school sisters of Notre Dame, like other sisters and nuns in the country that started schools for women way back, 1895, and here we are. It couldn't be a better time to be alive, couldn't be a better time to be a young person and to be alive in these times, very fertile times, great evil going on and great good springing up. And we get to be in the midst of it and we get to make our choices of where we're gonna put our lives. So thank you for having me and let me be a part of this day. It is great to belong to a spiritual tradition like our Catholic tradition. Mixed bag to be sure. We have real struggles in the Catholic church, you know, with the number of problems that have gone on with priest pedophilia, all kinds of stuff and women still don't have an equal voice in the church, but it's always gonna be wheat and weeds coming up together. And we get to be though, in the midst of the struggle. And I wanna talk about how our faith wakes us up. How when we set a course for our lives in the way that Jesus walked and what he taught us and how he lived, the way of compassion, the way of reaching out to poor and suffering people in the world, the way of leaving our egos behind and our self-centeredness and it's all about me to enter into the world of suffering of other people. That's really what life is all about. And that's what your life's journey is about. And what a great way to start by an education at Notre Dame. So celebrate today because you did a great thing, but you're just embarking. That's why it's called a commencement. I want to share a little bit about my own story, about how my own Catholic faith has awakened me to the deeper issues of our day and to be a woman who's involved in the issues of justice. Started out life of piety. I mean, very prayerful and we need that. We need meditation. We need prayer so we know our own deep souls and we don't always operate out of just stimulus response from the outside. We know what's inside of us and can follow and discern the following of that spirit in our own hearts to follow our dream, to pursue what it is that we're made to do and only we can do. So for me, entered the Sisters of St. Joseph taught by them in high school. And that education was a great one that I got in high school from the nuns because it was about developing intellectual ability, but also about how to live with other people and live in community, help develop leadership. When I graduated, I entered the Sisters of St. Joseph. This is in Louisiana, it was in New Orleans. And faith has been waking me up ever since. Started out thinking that my faith meant to be charitable to people around me. I was a teacher, I loved it. Uh, and praying for the poor people of the world, the starving people of the world. I mean, God, big problems like Ukraine and what's going on in Ukraine and where we're powerless and we can see the suffering of the people in prayer for the big issues, for the people I couldn't reach, but I didn't get it about justice. I thought if you were charitable to those around you, and when I awakened to justice, and I put this in my book, um, River of Fire, waking up to justice as an integral part of the gospel of Jesus, I moved into the St. Thomas housing projects in New Orleans. And for the first time in my life, lived among African-American people, who became my teachers. You got to understand what culture does. We live in cultures that give us eyes to see and ears to hear. When I grew up as a young woman in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, the Jim Crow laws in the Deep South was still in place. And the only way I knew Black people was as our servants. My daddy was a successful lawyer. We lived in the big house. Black people lived in the servants' quarters in the back. And I never questioned it because culture, but faith breaks through. And so when I'm moving to St. Thomas, because now I understand that the gospel of Jesus is more than just about being charitable to people around you, but it's about doing justice, getting involved in the issues of our day, systemic injustice and racism, huge. We're just awakening to it in a new way in this country with the killing of George Floyd in the front of the eyes of everyone. 
And then all the Black Lives Matter and just we're waking up in a new way. And I got to be taught by African-American people as my peers and my teachers. First time I ever heard the word white privilege. So I began to serve people in St. Thomas. I had grown up, Black people had served me, the woman of white privilege. So now I got to be of service to my African-American brothers and sisters. And it was while I was there that one day I got an invitation to write a man on death row. It was in the early 80s. I thought I was only going to be writing letters. Think of it like you put your boat into a stream and the current starts moving it. So I wrote the man, he wrote back, I visited him. And two and a half years later, I am inside the execution chamber with him. And I watch as the state, step by step, strapped him down in a wooden chair and pumped 1900 voltages of electricity through his body and killed him. And I witnessed it. And there's a saying from Latin America, what the eyes don't see, the heart can't feel. All those years where the death penalty was present in Louisiana, I never questioned it growing up. But my eyes saw I became a witness and I came out of that execution chamber. Didn't know what I would do, but I knew I had to do something because it's almost a secret ritual. All the, the people on your Maryland death row when you had the death penalty was far, far away from you. People in prison are far, far away from us. They're separated from us. We don't see them. When you don't see people and you don't meet them personally, it's easy to believe every stereotypical thing you hear about them, about how evil they are and these people are killers and we got to protect ourselves. And we miss the humanness. And the thing about the Jesus way is you keep coming back into the humanness. And I came then out of that execution chamber that night. And one of the things that led to was I wrote a book, Dead Man Walking. And when we... It was a hard book to write, to be persuasive, because it's so controversial. People were saying, yeah, look at what they did. They deserve to die. End of discussion. They killed, they die. Moral proportionism. How am I going to write a book? And how am I going to bring people into the story? I had a good editor. And Dead Man Walking takes you over, just like happened to me, into the horror of the crime, Two innocent teenage kids were killed by this man, Pat Sonia, and his brother. The suffering of the parents trying to make their way through the grief and then over into the scene where now we're going to see that what the state does then kills the one who killed their loved ones and promises them that they can sit on a front row and witness the execution and that's supposed to heal victims' families. And I can see it. And that's why I wrote the book. And then when you do a book, when you get your voice out in the public square, grounded in the truth and grounded in experience. And this is one of the things that's great about our times because voices are being raised in books, voices are being raised of women, voices are being raised of minority people in a way we've never had before. Frederick Douglass said it was easy for the masters of the slaves to have their voices heard. But who will raise the voices of the slaves? Who raises the voices of the minority, of the immigrants waiting at the border? Who raises the voices? Us. So what are you called to in your precious life, your one wild precious life? What are you called to? Well, today you're going to embark on it. And I just want to say to you, there are big problems in the world. Where, how do you know what you're going to do? You don't know but you're gonna grab onto a rope somewhere of an issue that you care about and you start giving yourself over to it and then it's gonna take you where you need to go. The most important thing is to act. Hope is an active verb, not by standing on the side, being overwhelmed by all the information you get, which you can get through your hand on your iPhone, overwhelmed, overwhelmed, but you put your hand on a rope and you begin to act. And you join a community of people. You don't last long when you work for justice if you only are going to try to do it by yourself. You got to join a community because they help sustain you in the long haul. I could not have for 30 years 
continue my quest to end the death penalty if I were not involved in a sustaining, supportive, challenging community. So I wish you well, and I'm glad to be an alumna with you uh, and claim Notre Dame as my uh, place because now I have an honorary doctorate. I know you had to work a lot harder for your uh, degree than I did, but I'm proud to be among you. And I'll leave you with these words from St. Bonaventure. He said, ask not for understanding, ask for the fire. The fire is the passion. The fire is what lights up your soul inside. The fire is the soul-sized endeavor that you're going to give your life to. So thank you for letting me be blessed among you. And uh, have a great life. Celebrate all day. You deserve to celebrate. And then to get to work, we need you in this world of ours to work for deep human rights for everybody and to use the gifts you've been given from Notre Dame to make those gifts available for the health and salvation of the world and our planet.